Emiko. Emiko. Steve. Steve Martin. Are you badly hurt? After last night, I'm lucky to be alive. I guess we're all living on borrowed time. Oh, Steve, what brought this upon us? I don't know, Emiko. I don't know. Your father, is he all right? Yes. He's meeting with the security officials now. Don't move, Steve. I'll try to get a doctor for you. It was still hard for me to believe that I could be lying here in a hospital alive when I think of the thousands of others dead and dying in the ruins around me. How are you doing, Mr. Martin? Mr. Iwanaga. During your flight last night, did anything unusual occur? Well, I didn't notice anything. I was busy writing and reading, and the rest of the time I was sleeping. Oh, I see. I understand you've questioned everyone on my flight. What is it you're trying to find out? I represent United World News. I don't know, Mr. Martin. I don't know whether it should be printed or not. I don't follow you. You see, we don't know what it is we're dealing with. At 3.30 this morning, a ship from Tokyo was literally wiped from the surface of the ocean in a matter of seconds. Anything from the ship's radio? It said there was a blinding flash of light and the ocean burst into flame. Could have been a mine or a collision. And why would the radio men not report a mine or a collision? That's a good point. Well, whatever's being done, I'd like to find out about. All right, come with me. Operator, give me Paul, please. Rush. Paul? Ah, Serrano, você manda imediatamente o telegrama para o Brasil. Acaba de ser afundado o oitavo navio japonês. Um grande desastre, uma coisa terrível. That's it, operator. Mr. George Lawrence, United World News, Chicago, USA. Japanese ship disasters puzzle world. Eight ships obliterated by a mysterious blinding flash of fire. No survivors found. Radio reports from stricken ships gave the same message. That's right. Terrible sea of fire engulfs all. Staggering death toll forces all shipping schedules be canceled. We'll remain Tokyo unless word from you. Sign it, Steve Martin. You got it, thanks. I'm afraid my Japanese is a little rusty. Dr. Yamani is suggesting to the officials that they question the natives of a small island. He says that Odo Island is close to the area where the disasters have taken place. The island people are beset by many dangers, Steve. Some real, some imagined. This ceremony is dedicated to one such danger. Well, there is a legend among the island people that somewhere off their shores, there exists a monster too terrible for a mortal to conceive. Many centuries ago, they used to send a young girl out on a raft, each year as a sacrifice. What's the name of this monster? Did you hear that? Godzilla. They believe their uh, Godzilla is responsible for all these ship disasters? They're certain of it. But there was still a feeling of anxiety among us all. For every ship that had taken this course had vanished from the face of the earth. Yes, there was a feeling of anxiety. But perhaps the two exceptions were Emiko and a young Marine officer named Ogata. 
At the moment, they seemed more interested in each other. When I'd last seen Emiko, she had just become engaged to Dr. Serizawa. It was the usual triangle. Only this time, it was to play an important part in the lives of millions of people. Of course, the question we are asking ourselves is how this animal happened to reappear after all these centuries and so near to the coast of Japan. One answer could be that some rare phenomenon of nature allowed this breed of the Jurassic age to reproduce itself. And for a long span of time, it had no reason to reappear to the world. But now that analysis of radioactivity of the creature's footprint shows the existence of strontium-90, a product of the H-bomb, it is my belief that Godzilla was resurrected due to the repeated experiments of H-bombs. You realize your story's front page all over the country. We want to know what's being done about this monster. Well, here's your headline. Security decides to use depth bomb on Godzilla. Well, that's fine. But how can they use depth bombs against something they can't even see? Same way they look for a submarine, sonar. Well, they'll find him all right. The big question is, will they kill him? Well, stay on it, Steve. And keep us posted. I will. So long, George. Steve, you are a better newspaper man than a linguist. It is good to hear from you. I just got the message that you called. Did you finish with your experiments? Yes, I finished. Good, let's have dinner tonight. Steve, make it tomorrow. Emiko is coming over this evening and she said it was important. All right, I'll check with you tomorrow. That would be fine, Steve. Sayonara. There is something important I must tell you. But there is something far more important which I must show you. The world must not know of this. Promise to keep my secret. Where's the light? on the hill. Godzilla was still in Tokyo Bay and there was every reason to believe he would return unless some means was found to stop him. Steve. Hi, Tomo. What'd you run out of the meeting for? Got to get this story off to the paper. Anything happen after I left? Yes. They're making one last big effort to stop me. What's that? Come here, I'll show you. To get to the heart of the city, Godzilla would have to break through 300,000 volts of electricity. The officials are trying to have everything ready by nightfall. Now I must report back to my station. All right. And thanks, Tomo. So long, Steve. Sayonara. Watch it. Hi, Emiko. You've been sleeping very nervously. Oh, God. Do 
develop? Nothing you will develop unless... Unless what? I was shown a terrible secret, which is probably the only weapon which could destroy Godzilla. What is it? I promised Dr. Serizawa never to reveal his secret to anyone. Emiko. Emiko, last night Tokyo was destroyed. Tomorrow it might be Osaka or Yokohama. If you can't help, you must. When I went to see Dr. Serizawa, I had intended to tell him about Ogata and me. But there was something he wanted to show me first. <laughs> Dr. Serizawa had been experimenting with oxygen. A way to destroy all oxygen and water. An amount no larger than a baseball could turn Tokyo Bay into a graveyard. Serizawa had found a terrible destructive power. He didn't want the world to know his secret. He made me promise never to tell what I had seen. Emiko, we need Serizawa's help. There's no other way. If I could only see him, just talk to him. Perhaps I can change his mind. Ogata will go with me. Whatever you do, Emiko, you mustn't fail. Sit down. I know of your oxygen destroyer. We must have it. I don't know what you are talking about. I told Steve Martin and Ogata, you must use your oxygen destroyer against Godzilla. No. We must have the formula. We must. Let's go. I'm sorry. Oh God. If we don't defend ourselves from Godzilla now, what will become of us? And what will become of us if a weapon such as I now have falls into the wrong hands? And you have a responsibility no man has ever faced. You have your fear, which might become reality. And you have Godzilla, which is reality. Attention, people of Japan. The voices of our children are raised in a prayer for the courage to surmount the destruction of today. This must be the only time the oxygen destroyer will be used. Serizawa insisted upon helping Ogata place the weapon. And now, the divers are descending. He asked the whole world to stand by. Serizawa has not yet started his ascent. of the world, Godzilla is dead. He said, be happy together. <laughs> the menace was gone. So was a great man. But the whole world could wake up and live again. <laughs> 